Hi, today I'll be talking about allergies and how you can reduce the risk of getting them or if you do suffer from them, what you can do to tame them down. Now I do need to make a disclaimer. The information that I will be talking about has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. It is based on my own personal research and experiences. It's not intended to be used to diagnose, treat, or cure, or prevent any disease. Now, back to the topic of allergies. I'm probably a few years older than most of you and uh, that are listening, uh, but when I was growing up in the 40s and 1940s and 50s, I vaguely recall people talking about having hay fever. Fortunately, I didn't seem to have hay fever, nor did anyone in my immediate family. Actually, I wasn't even sure what they meant when they uh, said that they had hay fever, other than that they sneezed and <laughs> blew their nose a lot. Now it seems that it is common for people to comment about their allergies. Um, when I was in my late 40s and early uh, I mean, late 30s, actually, and early 40s, I did start noticing that I would sometimes sneeze repeatedly um, and maybe have a runny nose. It wasn't that bad, but just enough to make me wonder if I was developing hay fever or, or rather allergies. Now, common triggers of respiratory allergies are pollens, dust, mold, dust mites, pets, Certain foods can also be triggers uh, for allergies such as peas, beans, coffee, tea, cola, chocolate, corn, bananas, margarine, and powdered food like uh, garlic powder and MSG. Some people have shown allergic reactions to eggs, pork, onion, poultry, milk, oranges, beans, nuts, apples, and even tomatoes. Now these foods are probably not necessary for everyone to avoid. It just means that you need to be aware that almost any food can cause an allergic reaction under circumstances that could possibly trigger a reaction. In reality, no one wants to uh, try to live in a bubble. So what do you do? You can try to avoid as many of the possible allergens as possible. Uh, you could keep a journal of what you have been around and what you had to eat in the last 24 hours that could have been a possible trigger. Uh, most people that suffer from allergies uh, do have poor functioning adrenal glands. Now the adrenal glands release hormones when you're under stress they help balance blood sugar and they help your body handle energy efficiently. You've probably heard of the fight or flight situation. Well, your adrenals are what regulate that. Excessive stress and excessive intake of stimulants such as uh, ca too much caffeine or refined sugar can bring about some level of adrenal exhaustion. And of course, complete adrenal exhaustion can be fatal, so it's not something to mess around with. Adequate nutrition and management of bad stress and stimulants can help uh, build up the adrenals. Now, digestive problems and or bacterial overgrowth are often linked to most allergic reactions. Foods that remain in the stomach, undigested, contaminated food, use of antacids, overeating, and slow transit time can all contribute to digestive issues, thus opening the door to possible allergic responses. Now, supplementation of nutrients, eliminating possible triggers, and eating a healthy diet of whole, unprocessed food will do wonders to avoid allergens. Uh, several years ago, a friend of mine was having to have a breathing treatment about once a month due to asthma attacks brought on by excessive allergies. 
she got a good, on a good supplement program and was able to discontinue her breathing treatments. Another friend who is a nurse suffered with severe allergies for years. Her allergies cleared up after getting on a good supplement program. I personally find it very, very frustrating when people and many who are in the medical field only seek relief by covering up the symptoms with over-the-counter and prescription medications. Covering up symptoms most often makes the problem worse. The symptoms may clear up for a period of time only to reappear with a vengeance. Meanwhile, those medications are only breaking down their immune system, their adrenal function, and creating more inflammation than is already present. Now, important nutrients include complete protein, essential fatty acids, omega-3s, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. These nutrients are required to build the proper support your body needs to combat allergies and asthma. Now, back to my personal situation I mentioned earlier. Like I said, when I was in my late 30s and early 40s, I was noticing some minor allergy symptoms. It was about then that I first became interested in nutritional supplements and their benefits. I started using supplements when I was 43 years old for other reasons. However, I soon realized I was not having the sneezing and running nose any longer. There is no doubt in my mind that had I not been taking quality supplements for the past 30 years, I would now have severe allergy responses like so many people around me have. Uh, there are people who suffer with serious sinus infections every year when certain plants or trees are blooming or budding out. Uh, it really is not necessary for them to suffer those discomforts year after year. Can you expect immediate results when starting a good nutrition program? Eating right in supplementation is not about instant gratification. Nutrition does not work like medicine. It's not about a cover-up. It's about recovery and healing. It requires a long-term commitment. For example, if you have allergies and start a good nutrition program, you will gradually notice an improvement in the symptoms. It will be over time that you can expect to be free of or have improved symptoms. Is it worth it? I certainly believe it is. Thanks.